Today on Inside Lagos, commuters along Aja Axis share their thoughts on Lagos State Government's plan of a flyover bridge. And we'll be taking you on a tour to a fair area of Lagos. Inside Lagos starts now. Epa is one of the largest zones in Lagos State. It is the country home of Governor Akimumi Ambode, the incumbent governor of Lagos State. The zone produced the immediate past speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly. Today, I'll take you to the heart of Epe Town and explore interesting stories for your viewing pleasure. I'm Ade Doja, Salam Adeni, and you're welcome to Inside Lagos. <laughs> This is a gathering of individuals concerned about the activities of dredgers. Over the years, there has been uncontrolled dredging in Lagos State. This has brought huge crises along the coastline of the state. People go about, just put their machines on the water, start depleting the sand, don't know environmental impact assessment, no traffic impact assessment, creating havoc along the line. I gave an example there where people are dredging so close to the Atlantic Ocean in some parts of the state, people are even degrading land. We have dredges, you know, littering the whole of the Lagos Lagoon and other waterways. And that activity, if not controlled, will cause the state to be devastated. You will see pockets and pockets of trenches being dug in the lagoon, and people will not even know that there are such trenches. If there is a boat mishap, people will be lost because you know, they'll be buried in those trenches. In a bid to protect the environment from further degradation and regulate the operations of dredging companies, the Lagos State Ministry of Waterfront Infrastructure Development has suspended the issuance and renewal of licenses to dredgers. It has introduced guidelines to check on all some operations. Speaking at a stakeholders meeting, the State Commissioner for Waterfront Infrastructure Development, Engineer Adebo Wale Akinsonya, said the days of illegal dredging, use of substandard and environmentally unfriendly equipment are over. The state has not issued any permit to anybody not dredging. So, in some area, illegal dredging is still ongoing. Before I give you the license, you have to know what we are doing. So. Uh, I give you the license at the same time, these are the guidelines that has been there, you are not following. So make sure you sign off on it, I agree with that. As I've said, some of them don't have environment impact analysis done, not approved. He said henceforth, the state government in partnership with the Nigeria Inland Waterways Authority would regulate dredging activities and issue approvals for all categories of permits. Some of them move from one location to the other without telling us. So that's something we need to tie down specifically. That you know, if you are going to move from point A to point B, you have to let the state know. You can't just walk in you know, and do things by yourself. So those are some of the things we we'll define. And also safety on the water with paramount. They've done things with impunity. We we'll give them license, they do something different. So from what we said, it's guideline for relating to safety and environment. There's nothing new 
Exactly. Nobody is allowed to carry out any form of dredging activity or any activity per se within the state without the sanction and approval of government. That's basically what we're telling ourselves here. For now, the state government will no longer allow dredging activities in some areas. We're not happy about that, but it, make, it specifically make mention of a particular area at the road that they should stop dredging from now based on the complaint about uh, the communities around the area. So, and it didn't specifically mention other areas that are dredging, but specifically mentioned at the road. But the rest of us say we should come and regularize our papers, which ended, uh, which expired last year. We should come and regularize it, and from there we'll move forward, then we'll know where we're going from there. What we're just asking from the government is to give us time. You can't, a lot of us have invested millions, collected loans, you know, employed a lot of people, contract, you know, on this dredging, and you can't just come and stop us. All we're saying is give us time. If you come up with your new rules and guidelines, just give us time to meet it. We met it the first time, and I'm sure we're going to meet it again. Epe is a local government area in Lagos State, Nigeria, and the country home of the governor of Lagos State, Akiwumi Ambodi. It is located on the north side of Lekki Lagoon. During the electioneering period, Governor Akiwumi Ambodi promised to invest massively in developing the area and improve the standard of living of its residents. Eight months after his inauguration as governor, the Inside Lagos School decided to visit the town to understand why it should be one of Governor Ambodi's priorities. The journey shouldn't be more than one hour 30 minutes from our office, but the story changed when we set out. Traffic is a major concern for residents along this stretch. This is Aja. The traffic here is hectic. The thing is horrible. It's terrible. This, I mean, it's, it's, it's something else. I'm experienced very lot of hold up here every blessed day of my life. It's just like this every day. At least you spend nothing less than three, four hours. Okay, so we want an overhead bridge from uh, VG, uh, from VGC down to uh, Abraham Adesonya. I think that will resolve the odor. Governor Kimo Miambodi recently said he will build a flyover bridge at this roundabout to ease traffic congestion. But how did commuters receive the news? We know, we, we had it. But they should do it on time. That's what we are expecting it on time. Let them do it. It's very, very nice. It will ease the problem here. You know, you know, we really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. You guys are doing the best. But let them fasten this work. Not that they will take a long time to do it, at least within one and a half years. I mean, it should be okay. The proposed flyover bridge by the Lagos State government on this Aziz is indeed not a misplaced priority. After interacting with them, we continue that journey. As we arrived in Ekbe, our first port of call was the palace of Oba Okmola Adesonya and Lara of Ilara. He was excited to receive us. We exchanged gifts and talked briefly about the proposed development projects in Epe.
full development iluweko ambo day is the son of the soul of akwe you can see the great works he has been doing and that is just a tip of the iceberg for the development of lagos he has just started the former governor babat in fashola worked a lot that we would never forget him and he was a great governor in lagos state i am confident that ambode would definitely do better than fashola it's a great governor in Lagos State. Oti be sini she titi. O ma she na she yori. Ambodi has started reconstructing roads, and he will do it successfully. Let's just support him with prayers. I want to be miti joba maba bojuto to ma develop ndui ono kwa nlarambi. Some places that I want the state government to develop is a road here in Ilara. We want them to reconstruct the road from Ilara Junction to Uji. Uji is surrounded with water. The place is easy for the fuel tappers from Potakot to transport themselves. So we want the Lagos State Government to help us tar the road. As we prepared to leave, the excited monarch gave us his blessings. Recently, I read a report on the three-year blackout in Ekpe and how difficult life was for residents here. So, my first assignment was to find out what has changed since Governor Kiro Miyambode assumed office. Those that were most affected by the blackout record their experience. Some don't even have generator, not to talk of power in heat. It really affected me personally then. Now that there is power supply, we now have cold drinks to enjoy. Then, when there was no electricity here in Ekwe, we suffered a lot that the profit we make is what we use to buy fuel to power the generator. At a point, fuel stations started behaving as they like because they sell the fuel at high rates. There was no light at all in Ekwe for like five years. It wasn't easy at all for my business, being a hairdresser. Recently, we've been having power supply, but we plead with Governor Hambody to keep up with the good work and provide us with stable electricity. It was for about five years that we lived here in Ekpe without electricity, before God sent our dear Governor Hambody to come to our aid. We really thank the Governor. God will continue to bless him. We've been enjoying power supply since last year, 2015, during the period Governor Hambody resumed office. There was blackout at the time in Ekwe. Ambody has provided electricity everywhere in Ekwe. We have started enjoying electricity. One of the earliest interventions by Governor Kiwomi Ambody was the restoration of electricity supply here. Now, residents are excited. Their community is alive again. Businesses are beginning to pick, and the standard of living is getting better. We've been seeing some steps that the Lagos state government is taking to ensure power supply is stable. So we are supporting them with our prayers that God should continue to strengthen them. People of Ekpe can't say they aren't enjoying electricity now. Residents say Governor Kimomi Ambody would have to do more to better their lots. The roads the state government wants to construct will really need them. Most of the schools our children attend is not conducive for them, so we need more classes and more teachers. We thank Governor Ambode because he is trying according to what we are seeing, but we know these things will get better. It's a gradual process. Last month, the Lagos State Government held a stakeholders meeting with Ekpe residents. The focus of the meeting was the rehabilitation of nine strategic roads in the Ekpe local government area. 
Now that I'm here, I decided to visit some of these rules to see if the government has commenced to work. While driving through the popular Lagos Road, I stopped by at Adebisi Street to see the extent of work done here. I met Maxwell Adoja, the project engineer. I asked him how soon will the project be completed. We are almost done with the drainage now. Maybe very soon, maybe by the end of the month, by let's say February, we we'll start the air to work. You have seen the signboard that uh, they are bringing us a good road. So we are waiting for it to happen. Ambody is going to try his best. Although the state government said buildings would have to give way, residents say it is a price they are willing to pay. The road Lagos state government want to construct will be very useful for everybody in a way. So I will appeal to the government to compensate the affected persons. This is Marina Road in Ekwe. One of the roads under construction by the Lagos State Government, this road leads to the second largest market in Ekwe area. That is the chief market. We are begging the Lagos State Government to hasten this road project so that we residents can benefit from Ambody's administration. This is Oluwo Market, popularly called Oja Chief. This market is dubbed the biggest fish market in southwest Nigeria. There is a bush meat section too. Ekpa is like the headquarter of fishing, especially in this Oluo market. People from Elisha, Asaba and so on have come this morning to buy fish. Even people from Ibadan, Lagos and Abuja do come here to buy fresh fish. There is no kind of fish you want that you won't find here. I visited this market in 2013. Let me show you a bit of what I saw. Oluo market is a unique market. It is populated by women who deal only in fish. Though the market has existed for decades, it lacks modern facilities. Some of the market leaders decried the lack of storage facilities like code rooms. No toilet, no water. One toilet is under construction for the past 11 years. Flood is another problem women in this market contend with. Whenever it rains, buyers stay away and sales come to a standstill. This is the live fish unit of the market. Here, Mujisola Adero says women stay with their baskets of fish inside the water from morning till night, preserving the fish and waiting for buyers. <laughs> It is unhealthy as we put our feet in the water. We spend a lot of money on treatment. Government should do this place like Badagri. Some of the buyers we caught up with in the market told us why they prefer the Ekpe fish market to others in the state. Uh, when we're looking for natural, not agricultural fishes, we, we tend to come here. The fish here is very cheaper, more than the one that we are buying from the other markets. Some of the women fishmongers say they have trained their children through university from sales made selling fish. Improving fishing activities in this area may require training on the making of fishing nets and other implements, a worthwhile investment government and private sector may want to consider. <laughs> Today, the story has changed. This is where some residents of Epe fish. Whatever they catch here, they sell in this market. I'll be entering the market now to see what the fishing community here has for sale. I would also be measuring how much of government presence is felt here. As we arrived, the market leader spotted us.
they took me on a tour around their markets. They showed me new stores built by the state government to support their businesses. Lagos State Government already provided a cold room for us, but they said we should buy diesel ourselves to power it. They didn't demand any money from us. The cold room is inside. I will show you. They brought me here to see this cold room built by the Lagos State Government. Lock and key. Ah, ah. Lagos State Government Ministry of Rural Development. Mm. In view of the blackout in Ekwe, the state government installed a power generating set to power the facility. They told me this posted the trade, but now they can't manage it anymore. The Lagos state government have provided cold room for us. We were using it before, but now we have stopped using it because we don't have much money to buy diesel. Oh, this will take for you. They also showed me this toilet facility built by the Lagos State Government. For them, their major requests in 2013 have been met. We thank Governor Akin Wumiambode because he's the King Governor. He has made everything available for us. But like Oliver Twist, now they want more. Managing their environment is key this time. They told me whenever it rains, their markets get flooded. They want the state government to help them construct efficient drainage system and save their market from being washed off by flood. What we want is that they should help us upgrade the market. If you go to the other part over there, it is not looking good at all during raining season. You won't be able to walk through that place even here. The flood will get to your knee level. The government should help us construct gutters so that flood can flow through. Our customers complain about the mud air and it affects our sales. If the state government can help us construct a good drainage so that the flood can flow, we will so much appreciate it. Loma don't come to this Oluo market to collect our wastes regularly. And that's making this market very dirty. We don't have where to dispose our waste. We want the Lagos State Government to help us make sure Loma comes to collect our waste regularly. We will appreciate if the government can give us boats, hooks, and other equipment to ease the fishing so that we can have more fishes to sell. It is true that there is power supply in Ekwe, but there is no electricity here in the market, and this hinders us from trading with the fishermen at night when they arrive. We do preserve our fishes with ice blocks in a container since there is no light to power the freezer. Night was approaching. We had to leave. But before I do, I decided to buy my favorite fish. I have a customer here. I had lots of fun negotiating how much to pay for each of these baskets. After much talk, I bought five. Don't bother to know the price. It wasn't expensive after all. On our way out, we talked about Lassa fever. Health is well, so we try as much as possible to always keep clean air in the market. We wash our fishes well before smoking them. 
we heard about Lassa fever, we make sure we lock our waist well so that there won't be any form of diseases here. Well, that has been a journey in a queer area of Lagos State for this week. Your town might be the next, so keep watching inside Lagos. Amade Doja, Salam Adeni, many thanks for watching. Bye bye. Koma si duta ope kowe, rara. Koma si duta ope kowe, pe kowe o koma si duta ope, pe kowe o beni. Pe kosi ni le odara o muwa o, e koni le odara o muwa o. Ibi koni radio kopi de esile, ikaramu.